A, a little bit of a point to prove tonight. He'll want to give Heffron a real argument. Ronnie Heffron, well, he'll see this, I'm sure, as a, a fight which he didn't particularly want. He'll just want to move on beyond this. And again, starting fast with the body shots. Yeah, straight away power shots again from Heffron. Peter McDonough's really got a nuclear bunker of a chin, though, hasn't he? He takes a terrific shot. He does take a shot on, he's going to need all that um, durability tonight because Heffron looks like again that he means business. There have been sporting stars come out of Oldham. David Platt, Paul Scholes. Not too many boxers though and uh, Ronnie says that he wants to be a big name for the town in which he lives. Heffern just saw the left hook, that was borderline low. Got away with it. Started very fast here, Heffron. Straight off, throwing those hooks to the body that he favours. <laughs> Throws hooks well with both hands, doesn't he? Yeah, he switches well with the power, well with either hand. The only thing I don't like is because he, he yelps or shouts every time he throws a punch. It means sometimes you can't get the combinations off, can you? You can't. You, know, you can only throw in, in twos. You're not a fan of the yelping. Well, I think sometimes you need to grit your teeth when you want to let a, a flurry, a fast flurry go. You can't do it. But obviously, Heffron is all about power. Well, he's really tried to load up on these body shots in this opening round. Not a huge amount coming back from McDonough in the first three minutes. But I think this would be McDonough's tactic, wanted to cover up, hoping Heffron runs out the steam and just try and sneak the shots when he is, which he's doing right now. Some good work there from, from McDonough off the rope. Former ABA champion Ronnie Heffron won the 2009 ABA title, beating Bradley Skeet in the final, stopped him as well. At the moment, McDonough's giving as good as he gets. It seems like he's taking a bit of a beating on the ropes, but he's countering every time Heffron stops throwing punches. And the shots are not as effective as Heffron's, but they're landing punches. McDonough coming on stronger in the second half of this round, but Heffron dominating the first part and overall doing enough to take the first three minutes for me anyway. Yeah, no, definitely for me also. I think Heffron won the round, but McDonough came back in the latter stages. Started really fast, Ronnie Heffron, peppering McDonough with the body shots, but McDonough came back well in the closing stages of the round. Yeah, I don't know whether peppering's the right word, because he's literally... Thudding. Oh, yeah, that's more like it. He really was digging those hooks in. And that uppercut, he came straight out, didn't he? So that double jab, oh, right oh, uppercut. Oh, oh, not too hard. Oh, some light, yeah. some light. Oh, bang, bang with everyone. Tap, tap, woo. Got the whistle. Yeah. Corner. Anthony Farnell is a pretty decent middleweight himself. In the day, yeah, he he learned the light box at the very best, didn't he? Farnell was a good fighter himself, and uh, he was a tough fighter. And some good advice as well, telling Heffron not to put everything in every punch. Sometimes you got to change the weight and the pace of the shots. Because someone like McDonald's, he will get used to the power shots and and just cover up and not get your rhythm. You got to change your rhythm. Well, let's be honest, it's highly unlikely that Heffron's going to get the stoppage win. <laughs> That's right, yeah, not, not against McDonough. It would, really would be a result, wouldn't it? Good left hook there, landed by McDonough. Heffron really trying to soften him up, though, with these body attacks. 
many a fighter has found that McDonough is very hard to move. Beaten Lee Purdy in the past, of course. And a really good fight against Lenny Dawes. Beat Michael Gomez. And I've got to be honest, a lot of these hooks to the body are actually hitting the arms of McDonough. You can see the redness on his on the crease of his arms there when he's bent over. So he's blocking a lot of shots, McDonough. A few are getting through, mind, but he's blocking a lot of them, to be fair to him, and, uh, and firing back when he can. Referee Bob Williams is the guy scoring this one. McDonough's corner giving him a bit of uh, applause for the two left hooks that he threw countering that big attack from Heffron. Well, see, sometimes because Heffron is heavy handed and he makes such a loud noise when he throws the punch, it can sometimes make you think that he's dominating the fight, but I tell you right now, he's not. At the moment, McDonough's given as good as he's getting. Not power-wise, but I mean scoring shots, and there's nothing in this round at the moment. For me, anyway. It'll be interesting to see how the referee scores it. Good headshots there by Heff on left hook, first of all, then a right hand in the next combination. But they just bounce off McDonough, don't they? He's got such a terrific chin. He do, and McDonough's working quite well as also. He's, as soon as Heffron stops throwing punches, he's continually to throw his. They haven't the same weight or conviction, but they are, some of them are landing and scoring shots. Only the second round, this is going to be a gruelling fight. That's good from Heffron. Donna nearly landing an uppercut after the bell. I think Heffron it gave it a, threatened a little bit of afters, and the referee had him straight back to the corner. Right. Well, I think it was after the bell, but I Take think it out. was unintentional. Heffron's round? It was, John, but not by much. I think all the heavy shots were landed by Heffron, but a lot of them were taken, were caught by the arms and the gloves of McDonough. And he got through with his own combinations and his own landed his own shots just. There was more weight behind the shots of Heffron, and that's well, what swayed it when you step towards him, him for me. Right, jab, sit down on that shot. The straight shots, is bang, bang, colours, colours, move, move, one <laughs> Come on, that's it. Feel good? That's it, good. Listen, when he throws, oh, he stands oh, Mark Rowe with Peter jab. McDonough. A little bit of bad blood at the end of the second round and the referee just giving them a firm reminder at the start of the third. And then, oh, vicious uppercut there from Heffron. Both calling each other on there, John, at the moment. Donna using a bit of the experience and ring savvy there as Heffron tried to land power shots and just couldn't find the target clean. Yeah, nice little bit of lateral movement there from McDonough showing that he does have a, a fair bit of skill. Two of them landing simultaneously and you can see the power is very much with Heffron. That's good work there, just spinning to the side. I thought that left hand was low. It was low. The action was good, though, making the space for the shot. McDonough wanted a little bit of uh, help from the referee, which wasn't forthcoming. But it's not the first left hook to the body that's been low, to be fair. Oh, Heffron just needs to keep moving his head more when he's going forward. Heffron's work rate in this third round, perhaps not quite as intense as it has been in the opening two. Well, now he is going to get the word about the low punches. Not for the first time. Well, to be fair, the referee uh, you know, let a few of them go and it was about time that he did give Heffron a little bit of a warning. Say next time he will be taking a point away.
nice little uppercuts inside from McDonough. Heffrich is a little bit guilty of standing in front of the opponent, isn't he? Giving McDonough an opportunity to work back. Well, his work rate has definitely dropped in this third round, Heffron. He has, but he's still landing with clean shots. He just needs to keep turning, turning McDonough when he's, when he's pushing him back. Well, that was a good left hook to the body. A lot of talent at this uh, division in the UK at the moment, welterweights. And Heffron looking to make moves up towards championship class and get towards the big paydays. But McDonough's giving him a real argument here. Yeah, most definitely is. I think you know, the rounds have been close. You just have to edge Heffron, don't you? Well, there's not a lot in that one. Heffron landed the bigger punches. Whether you like to wet shave or prefer an electric razor, you'll love this little gem. Introducing the Microforce Wet and Dry Shaver. Half the size of a conventional electric shaver with amazing power. It's cordless. Use it wet or dry for a close and comfortable shave. Micro technology makes it shorter and narrower than a credit card, but still gives you two amazing shaving surfaces with fantastic power of 9,000 RPM for a close, clean and comfortable shave. Plus, it's completely waterproof. This amazing shaver can be used in the shower. Use it anywhere, anytime. Now, we don't suggest shaving underwater, but we did it to prove how well Microforce works. Microforce is rechargeable, holding its charge for up to seven days of normal shaving. Extremely compact, so it's easy to be perfectly groomed wherever you go. Slip one in your briefcase, keep one in the car, in your office drawer. So if you're away from home and need to shave, Microforce. Incredible value. As an added bonus, you'll also receive our deluxe 10-piece grooming kit. Always look your best. And if you don't agree Microforce is convenient and gives you a clean, comfortable shave, simply return it within 14 days of purchase for a full refund. But you can keep the grooming kit as our gift. That's right, you get the Microforce Wet and Dry Rechargeable Razor and our deluxe 10-piece grooming kit, Microforce. Call now. A day with Shaw for Men, extra cool. Long lasting fresh protection throughout the day. Shaw, extra cool. It won't let you down. You just hear that word, cancer. You can't take it in. But then there was Carol, my Macmillan nurse, and she was saying, I can help you through this. I got really upset when my hair started falling out, as you can imagine. <laughs> but chatting online at Macmillan, the girls suggested I have it cut short. And yeah, it's OK. Telling the kids, that's the toughest bit. I don't think I would have coped if Joe from Macmillan hadn't talked me through it. And then I, I met Bill. He's a, a benefits advisor from Macmillan. And now I can stop worrying about money and concentrate on getting better. Well, I got through it, the cancer. But I know I can still call the Macmillan team if I need them. We know cancer's a tough journey. So for support every step of the way, call the Macmillan team free on 0808 808 0000 or find us online. For me, that was another round for Heffron, I think. Here's the low punch. Cool, dear, it was as well. 
Yeah, it was very low. But the action was, was another one, again. The action was right, that we made the space for the shot, it was just a little bit too low. The head from corner happy though with the way things are going. McDonough competitive but not winning rounds, at least not the way we're seeing it. He'll think he's ahead, John, I'm pretty sure. Or he'll definitely think he's in the fight, which he is in the fight, but I just think he just, just about lost the rounds. Well, Peter's got 18 wins and 25 defeats in his mind. I think he reckons that about 15 to 20 of those defeats were bad decisions. Well, if they were fights like this, you could un half understand why he'd feel he'd, he'd won some of those rounds and won some of those fights. Efren continuing to use the hook as his principal weapon. Efren needs to go back to work and behind the jab. Do you think he would struggle if he had a, if he was up against somebody who had a real ramrod jab, Heffern? Think I, he could have the variety? I think he needs more head movement, that's for sure. I think he's, he's I think he'd be an easy target to hit against someone who had good lateral movement and like you said a decent jab. But also he is very strong, isn't he? And he is a heavy handed. Yeah, he's physically very strong. Just thinks that he, he needs to move his head when he's coming forward. A little bit like that and work around the body when he has the guy on the ropes, work around the body a little bit, just a little bit guilty of standing square on and in front of the opponent, giving him an opportunity to, to, to fire back. And McDonough, again landing, he has got through with a few shots in this round. Nice little right uppercut there from Heffron. Oh, crunching right hook to the potty. But McDonough keeps firing back. McDonough, McDonough's had some success in this round, but he just hasn't really had the power to force Heffron into taking too much of a backward step at any stage. No, but I was going to say, for me, McDonough's outworked Heffron in this round. I think the last three rounds have been pretty close, haven't they? And I think this, this round, for me, has is, is, is been a McDonough round so far. Well, Heffron started like a runaway train, didn't he, first couple of rounds, and he, I think he's taken a lot out of himself. McDonough, as you said, Barry, looked as though he was just prepared to take the shots in the early stages, try and ride out the storm, cover up, and maybe starting to come on a little bit stronger now. That was a good round for McDonough for me, finish it strong as well, which was very important psychologically for him. Relax. Deep for me. Good man. Bear around. Each one of those tiring. If you can, pick it up a little bit. But get on the back. Boxing, Pete. Boxing now. When you're kicking him with that jab, then come. And as soon as he, as soon as he comes in, right. try to do his work. As soon as he comes in, try to do his work. Tie him up a bit. It's a touch, mate. Jab right. Peter. Jab right. It works. Get on your boxing. Come on. Keep those straight shots in his face all the time. Listen, Pete. He's getting tired. He's getting tired in there. He's had a better round. They reckon that Heffron might be tiring. Well, it would seem that way, wouldn't it? You know, I think they, they, they read the fight quite well. Into the second half of the fight. And on your card, Barry, Heffron by three rounds to one. But that could easily be two rounds apiece, couldn't it? And then moving his head, that's good. Moving the head after he's thrown the punches. He 
has to constantly turn McDonough, doesn't he? Because if he's after he throws his combinations and he stands in front of McDonough, he gives him a chance to work back and get himself back in the fight. That shout with every big shot does become irritating after a while, doesn't it? It's a bit like watching Monica Sellers play tennis in the... <laughs> but it's all, obviously it's something he's done always and it's to get maximum power. I can understand why. And it's also... It makes you feel that he's, the shots are maybe harder than they actually are, though he hits hard enough not to do that. But it's not always about the heavier shots, is it? It's about the, sometimes it's about volume and scoring shots. He's, he's probably edging this round at the moment, uh, Heffron, but he needs to keep turning McDonough, not giving him a chance to work back into the fight. There's not a lot in it, Barry. McDonough's landed a fair number in this round. That's a good uppercut for Heffron. That was a quality shot. And they're the sort of shots that are swinging the rounds in his favour when they've been close. McDonough protesting to the referee about Heffron getting in his face and leaning on, pushing. McDonough fighting well off the ropes there to come back. Well, Mark Rowe was saying, work on your boxing, keep it straight, work behind the jab. Oh, now that was a low one again. Surely he's going to have a point taken away here. Now, is the referee going to take a point? Well, he's got away with it, but that is the... It was blatant. Yeah, it was, yeah, and he's, been, and he's done it a few times before, and the referee did warn him, I presume that would be his final warning now. They're not intentional, but they still had illegal blows. Well, I'll try another look at that between rounds, I guess, and uh, it looked very low to me. And maybe it's had an effect on McDonough. Some heavy shots coming in from... Uh, from Heffron, McDonald though bravely fighting back, making a good fight of this job. It's a good scrap. And McDonough still fancies it. He's fighting with a bit of anger. Good right hand. And another one. Oh, some interesting exchanges in the closing stages of that round. Well, how do you, how do you score that? You've got to give it even, haven't you? I guess it was as good as it got from each fighter. Heffron was on top in the early stages. Now, here's the low blow. Oh, dear me, that makes your eyes water, doesn't it? <laughs> that was the worst one of the lot, wasn't it? And he was really lucky to escape a warning there and a, and a point deduction. I should think when that landed, point deductions wouldn't be what Peter McDonough was thinking about. That would have hurt. <laughs> How have you scored that round, then? I, mean, I scored the even, which is probably the first even round I've scored on Box Nation. Came back well, though, McDonough, in the closing stages of the round. No more event to the rest. Oh, Especially when you're using your feet. Sixth round of eight, and Heffron a couple of points ahead on your card, Barry. It all depends how you've seen, maybe, was it that the third round, you know, you could have easily give that to McDonough and then this fight would be even. Oh, that's a good shot from McDonough. And followed up with a left hook also. Heffron walked straight into that. Maybe an example of where, if McDonough had been a heavier puncher, Heffron would have been in more trouble, but Heffron takes it well. He is very fit. Yeah, he is. But that, again, it was just a perfect example of showing that he doesn't move his head. It's the one thing that, especially being a come-forward fighter, he's going to have to learn to do more efficiently. <laughs> Good jab, though, there from Heffron. McDonough's got every old pro's trick, hasn't he? His shoulder and the elbow goes in on the blind side of the ref. 
he, he does, but he's always looking to work, isn't he? He's not, yeah, absolutely. No, he's not looking to hold or anything like that, you know, to be for the rest. He's always looking to work, always looking to fight. Well, we've had a fair share of messy undercard fights tonight. And this one has kept the action going. Coming up next after this, of course, main event of the night. Junior Witter against Frankie Gavin, the British welterweight title. And again, uh, McDonough landing with the uppercut, uh, the hook, sorry, first, and, and another one. McDonough still fighting with belief. Grueling fight. There's not been much respite from the action for either. That's not a good right hand there from Heffer. No, there's not. There really is. Really both putting the work in. There was Heffern then just trying to spin McDonough. And that's the right sort of idea. Again, not moving his head though and getting caught. And again. Last two body shots of the round, landed by Peter oh, McDonough. Another good round. Another you know close what? round. No, I think I give that round to McDonough. I think all the heavier shots He's were landed by uh, by Heffron, but he started the round off well, McDonough, and finished it well. Hold it. I know. Slowly out. Once more in. Kick down, listen. That's that right hand from McDonough. Right on the button. Yeah, that was the beginning of the round. He laughed, landed with a left hook then again. And then Heffron had some, some success then in the middle of the round. But again, McDonough finished it. The better and the stronger. And a lot of, lot of the punches that Heffron had thrown, those body shots at Heffron. Um, McDonough is catching him on, on his arms and his gloves. And we really have a fight, don't we? Two rounds to go. If the referee's scoring it as you are, Barry, then it could still go either way. The only thing is, though, when they're, they're both landing shots, but Heffron's have clearly the more power, they're the more destructive of the two. McDonough pushed Bradley Skeet close and thought he'd beaten him, and he's, for my money, has given Heffron a closer fight here than they, than it was first time round. Yeah, it looks it for me. I think the, the last fight on on the hay on the card, it was a, he was a clear winner, wasn't he, Heffron? Another left hand, strayed, dangerously close to being low from Heffron. If he got pulled up again, he'd surely get a point deducted, and that could have a big effect. Yeah, well, on my card, it would definitely have a big effect. Again, because he doesn't move his head when he goes forward, that's better. At the moment, he's just so upright, and such a stationary target, McDonald doesn't have to look for him, just have to throw his arms out. But if he's moving his head, rolling his shoulders, coming forward, McDonald has to look for the target. Well, the winner of this one potentially could be moving towards a challenge for the British title. That's the one we've got next, Witter against Gavin. That's better work from Heffron, just again spinning McDonough, then landing with the left hook of the body. Grueling fight. 
both lads here really having to suck it up. Well, you would think a lot of people would be scoring for Heffron because his shots are the heavier, but it's about scoring shots, isn't it? Well, they're really going toe to toe here. Good from McDonough. And again. Yeah. That's good work back there, though, from Heffron, showing a little bit of fighting spirit. Just some of McDonough's work, though, again, a little bit scrappy, isn't it? Hitting Heffron from behind the ears, not really scoring shots. Hard round again. And an appreciative crowd. But for that reason, with McDonald's work just getting a little bit scrappy is the reason why I gave that round to Heffron. Yeah, and then as you step off, right hand jab. Plant your feet. Shorten that jab up, let it go right on his nose. There's a big hurt him in there now, yeah? yeah. Come on, concentrate, this is what I'm telling you. Right, get them feet down. Hey, eh? listen, keep, keep going, keep going. Yeah. Don't rest for him, don't let him rest. Thank you. Yeah, that's that's the last wants. round now. He wants to rest, and then he will come. If you rest, you're going to let him work. Good jab, good jab. Jab right up. Come back left up, come back right up. Well, you've got it by two points to Ronnie Heffron at this stage, Barry, and we're going to the last round. Yeah, and I think, you know, I, I just think that last round, I think McDonough worked well. But some of his work was just a little bit scrappy and they were landing on the back of the head of Heffron. Both guys being told that they need a big last round here. The left hook there from McDonough just uh, shook Heffron up a little bit, I think. And then a good solid left hook coming in from Hepburn. And I think momentarily that really took the wind out of McDonough. That's good work. <laughs> McDonough trying to protect his body. And to be fair to him, he is blocking most of those shots, isn't he? That's better from Heffron, just rolling his shoulders, not being a, a stationary target for McDonough to hit. <laughs> the old toughest is Peter McDonough. <laughs> and he's giving it a real go in this last round. Slightly overhanded glove. Needed to really step on him though. And these are two desperately tired men. Who's going to be able to produce the grandstand finish now as we move towards the last 30 seconds? Oh, so that's the punch of the round from McDonough, caught him absolutely flush. And just landed with a good right hand as well over the top, followed by a left hook. Takes one back for his trouble and another one. Right hand from Heffron this time. Well, this has been a tremendous last three minutes. And they know that was a tough, tough fight.
You've got to give that round even, haven't you, John? Surely, how, how could you split them two? Well, for what it's worth, I think McDonough edged that last round. I wouldn't argue with you one minute. Good fight, fight. good oh, fight. Cracking fight. There's the left hand. Oh, dear. And as you said, if McDonough could punch... Whew. And if he could just have found the follow-up punch, maybe a bit of fatigue. Hard fight. Just showing Heffernan coming back with his own good shots. It was real good total to soul stuff, wasn't it, from start to finish. Oh, good fight, and Ronnie Heffern looking up to some of his supporters as much as to say, have I won it? Close fight, John. Yeah, well, we think he has won it, but by, not by a great deal. He got it by two points. Well, now comes the moment of reckoning. We're about to find out. Ronnie Heffern going to keep the undefeated record? Mark Burdis can tell us. Ladies and gentlemen, your referee, Bob Williams, scores a contest. 77 points to 76 points. The winner in the blue corner from Oldham, Ronnie Heffern. Ronnie Heffern gets it. Ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause, please, for the guy, Peter McDonald. The new home.